All right, here's some exercises to try. These exercise one is very similar to example two, but with a few things that might make it a little trickier. So um, you can go through my explanation for example two if you want to check that, um, or, or if you're if you're stuck. Uh, and for exercise two, um, sort of the same idea. So all of, both of these exercises are just practicing the that you understand the basic definition of a logarithm. So I'll give you a moment to pause it to do these if you haven't yet. Okay, so here we are. We want to know what is log of 10 to the power 4.6? Well, I'm just writing out the definition of a logarithm here. The result of this logarithm is the exponent of 10 that results in 10 to the power 4.6. So what would you put here to make these the same? How about 4.6? I think that's how I can make those the same. So this is just 4.6. So in other words, if, if you see this, this is asking what is the exponent of 10 that is the same as 10 to the power 4.6? And the answer is just 4.6 is that exponent. How about log of 10? So, in other words, what is the exponent of 10 that results in 10? 10 to the power 1 is 10, so this logarithm is 1. Um, what is What power of 10 gives you negative 10? Maybe you're thinking negative 1? Well, 10 to the power negative 1, remember, is just... 1 divided by 10 to the 1. It's just 0 0.1. So that's not negative 10. Uh, so it turns out this is impossible. Uh, we saw from the graph before that the result of a exponent, like 10 to the power t, is always a positive number. It's never 0 and it's neg never negative. So this is uh, undefined. Let's see, now what about log of the square root of 10? That's going to be whatever the exponent of 10 is. That's the same as the square root of 10. That would be 1 half, or 0 0.5. By the way, you can always check these with your calculator. It's a good thing to do. If you do log of the square root of 10, you get 0 0.5. So that works. This one's a little trickier. Um, you have 1 over the cube root of 10. Hmm. Well, 1 over the cube root of 10, that's the same as 1 over 10 to the 1 third. That's what the cube root means. And then if you want to write that as not in the bottom of the fraction, that's what a negative exponent does. So 10 to the power negative 1 third is the same as that 1 over that cube root. So the result here is negative 1 third. Uh, and for part f, we need a calculator because you know the answer is going to be somewhere between 1 and 2 because 10 to the power 1 is 10 and 10 to the power 2 is 100 and 50 is somewhere between 10 and 100. So with a calculator... You're going to get 1.699. So let's see. What are the values of x that make log of x be undefined? Um, that happened when uh, x is 0. You can't do log of 0, and you can't make or you can't do log of a negative number. So when x is less than or equal to 0. OK, so for exercise 2, let's try to evaluate each of these. So for these ones, I'm not 
writing in this extra step here. I'm not giving you that hint. But when you see a logarithm, that's what you should be thinking. You should be thinking 10 to what power is 10 results in 10 to the 6.7. And whatever that power is, that is the result of this logarithm. And in this case, that is 6.7. Okay. Um, so let's see. For this one, the square root, if I want to write that as just an exponent, I'm going to write that as to the power of 1 half. So I have log of... Uh, 10 to the power 3, and then that to the power 1 half. The square root here just turning into the 1 half exponent. You can then write that as log of 10 to the 3 halves. And so what is the exponent of 10 that results in 10 to the power 3 halves? That would be just 3 halves, or 1.5 if you prefer. Uh, this one, what is the exponent of 10 that results in this, in 10 to the power negative 4.5? That's just going to be negative 4.5. Again, whatever this result is, is the exponent of 10 that gives you 10 to the negative 4.5. So negative 4.5 works there. D's a little different. Let's think. Let's let's start with log of a thousand. So log of a thousand is whatever the exponent of ten in is that results in a thousand. So ten to what power is one thousand? That would be ten to the power three. So that means I can rewrite this as just 3 is the result of that logarithm. And then what is 10 to the power 3? Oh, that's 1,000. So you can see how these kind of are canceling each other out here. Um, like log of 1,000 means the exponent of 10 that results in 1,000. And... If you do 10 to that exponent, you're going to get 1,000. Let's try this one the same way. Um, so if I just want to find log of 1 first, so I'm just going to simplify that part. But what is log of 1? Uh, well, log of 1 is the exponent of 10 that results in 1. 10 to the power 0 is 1. So that's why I'm so log of 1 is 0, leaving the 10 in the base there. And then 10 to the power 0 is 1. So again, the 10 and the logarithm cancel each other out. Um, okay, but what about this? If you have log of negative 10, oh wait, log of x is undefined when x is less than or equal to 0, like negative 10 is here. So that means that, that this is undefined. So this is like 10 to the power of something that doesn't exist itself doesn't exist. So they don't exactly always cancel each other out if part of it is undefined. So um, this exercise was to try to explain why these inverse properties work. Why log of 10 to a power is just the power. Um, and that works for what values of n? Are there any values of n that make 10 to the power n undefined? Like we had this with n as a negative number over here. We did this with a positive number. Uh, we did this with log of, well, never mind. Um, so, so it works with if n is a negative number or a positive number. Uh, so this works for all values of n. Because 10 to a power is always defined. And log of that is the exponent of 10 that results in 10 to that power. It's just n. So that always cancels out. But 
10 to the power log of n, that was equal to n when n was 1,000. It worked out here. We got 1,000 back out. It worked with 1. But log of negative 10 was undefined. So if the n is negative, it doesn't work. The second one here doesn't work. But if n is positive, it does. All right, so these are important properties to know. We got a lot of things in boxes here that uh, th these important facts, definitions in, in boxes that you're going to need to, to refer back to for the rest of chapter seven. Anyways, let's uh, try to do exercise three and four. I'll show you the answers to those in the next video.